love the music, Maggie. I love I know. the music. I'm going to repeat what I said earlier on dailies this week. It is a good Collider Dailies day when there's a Jurassic headline. Oh. I love Camp Cretaceous so, so much. Are you caught up on it? I am like halfway through it. I've been trying to slowly binge it to get caught up for the show. It's a hard, it's a hard slow binge because I feel like it's one of those things that you just you fly through like one because the episodes are so short. But I think they do have really effective cliffhangers where I just kind of like need to know what happens next. I know. If I didn't have so many other things I have to watch, too, for my job. What else do you have to watch? No. It's, <laughs> it's not like I've been to, like, three shows this week for reviews or anything. Um, but I really want to because it's so good. And I love animation. Uh, and I love this style of animation. It's really great. Um, yeah. You know, work. The funny thing is, I mean, clearly everybody knows from the headline what we're already leaning into today. Um, they reveal, I think they're still calling this a teaser trailer, though, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This feels, like more, this feels more of like a trailer trailer to me. But anyway, they released a new Jurassic World Chaos Theory teaser trailer, and it does reveal a lot more story information. But because you brought up the animation, I'll never forget when Camp Cretaceous first started. And I looked at the animation, I think because I had just watched a little bit of the Fast and Furious animated series, and that kind of fell well below my expectation. And the animation in that didn't really impress me. I was worried that the same would be true of Camp Cretaceous, that it would be... Mm -hmm you know, a little more, a little more like younger viewer leaning and it wouldn't hit me as strongly both animation wise and story wise. And my God, I could not have been more wrong about that. It so far exceeded my expectations in both respects. I love how many animated series we're getting like this year and last year that like are marketed for kids, but the stories are so solid that I almost feel like the adult fan base for them is even bigger at times. It makes then, me very happy. And it's like legit good content. Like I, one of the things that I love saying about Camp Cretaceous in particular, and like everyone out there knows I'm a massive Jurassic fan. I liked all of the movies, obviously to varying degrees, and I have criticisms of certain ones, but I really do think Camp Cretaceous is one of the best new Jurassic things we've got. I think that's a good point. Yeah. I mean, I'm a huge Jurassic Park fan myself. Uh, and I'm always like hesitant to see where they're going with like the different movies, the different stories that they're telling. And this one really hit yeah. in the right place. And I think this new series is going to kind of continue building on the hype from Camp Cretaceous. It does look that way. I mean, I, I was like a little worried that, I mean, I, I don't even want to say worried. I was fine with the idea of it continuing on with Darius and him alone, but mm -hmm. What this trailer reveals and then teases, I'm starting to think that maybe it's chaos theory and not necessarily another Jurassic feature film that's going to deliver on what I've wanted so badly since the end of Fallen Kingdom in particular. So mm -hmm. this trailer notes that the bulk of uh, the bulk of the action here takes place uh, six years after the kids are rescued from Eastland Nubar and. Ben shows up at his door and he says, someone's hunting us. We need to warn the others before it's too late. Which to me certainly suggests that all of the surviving six are going to be, what did they call them? Do they call them a surviving six? Yeah. Now, now I can't remember the specific uh, term they use to, to define them, but that to me signals that we're like one by one going to reunite with all of them in which case we could wind up getting what I've been rooting for all along, which is seeing how different people in different parts of the country, maybe the world, are reacting to life with dinosaurs. Which I think is long overdue. We need more of that. Yeah, I mean, there's clearly, in addition to that, like it wouldn't just be, you know, average people waking up and being like, oh, how do I adjust my life now that there's a dinosaur there? It's <laughs> kids with a with a longstanding history with what happened at Jurassic World and what life is like with dinosaurs. And, you know, there's the hunting us aspect. So there's going to be some sort of like nefarious organization that's going to be a big part of the storyline as well. But I do have high hopes that chaos yeah. theory could balance both things quite well. And it plays off what we were talking about before the show with like my personal love for like the, the the boots on the ground, the people who are like living the day to day life with these these things that are happening to them that kind of steps away from the more like central focus of some of the other movies and stories and stuff. And so that makes me very excited. I want to know yeah. what I would do if I woke up in a world where there was dinosaurs. I think I'd be I, really happy and also scared. <laughs> 
So we were talking about something unrelated before we went live, but I think this kind of ties together quite nicely. I would 100% be the dummy who gets <laughs> too close, tries to touch, tries to be a friend, and gets a limb bitten off or something. Yeah, I'd be the girl on the, the beach with the, the sandwich. I think of that scene. So oh, often. from Lost World? Mm -hmm, that, yeah. The roast beef sandwich. Yeah, the roast beef I That traumatized me as a kid. <laughs> that, I mean, that I... I, I mean, I guess I could think of some scarier scenes from the first one in particular, but but that scene did scare me a bit because I 100% would go to a beach and feed zombies if I could. Here, let me feed the dinosaurs. They look cute. Oh no, they have teeth. <laughs> I do. Uh, I do quite want uh, my own bumpy though. That's that's mm. what Camp Cretaceous has taught me. Yes, I, I would probably be the Ben of the group in that respect. I love that. So I have. I'm like wondering what they're gonna do from here because. They're clearly calling this one a teaser mm -hmm. for a reason. So I do wonder if they're going to keep releasing teasers that maybe show more of the characters or if the next yeah. one's going to be a full-blown trail, a full-blown story trailer. And then they're going to end the marketing campaign there. And then I guess the smarter thing now that I'm talking it through would be, you know, as, but it's going to be a dump. Like they're, they're going to yeah. release them all. So I guess what's the point in building like that? All right. I take it back. Do slow little teasers of all the characters and get me really hyped and then dump a story trailer on us. There you go. Do like uh, little teasers that then fit into the bigger one. So it's kind of like you see little pieces of it yeah. and then the full one all together. There you I'll go. Take I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that. I got I got very, very high hopes for this show, though. I think they did a brilliant job with Camp Cretaceous. And I'm really I'm really excited to see where Chaos Theory takes us. And I'll just repeat what I've said tons of times at this point. I love the title Chaos Theory. Love, love, love. All right, story yeah. number two for today's dailies is a first look image at Star Trek Section Thirty One. I've yes. watched, I've I've watched a little. I've been to I've been to the conventions. Like I do know Star Trek, but I don't know it nearly as well as Maggie yeah. does. So Maggie, the floor yeah. is yours. Thank you, thank you. So I am very excited for Section Thirty One. We got our first sneak peek look at it this week. It was a picture of Michelle Yeoh uh, interrogating a mysterious character that we don't know who that is yet. Uh, and they just finished wrapping up on the film last week. We got that kind of sneak peek reveal uh, via Instagram from one of the cast members. And this is essentially the movie that was supposed to be the spinoff backdoor pilot thing that they introduced in Star Trek Discovery for the Section Thirty One. But now it's like the first Star Trek movie and very long time that we're finally getting kind of returning to some of Star Trek's, you know, kind of glory days of being uh, a movie. So I'm very excited for that aspect. It also has like a fantastic cast. And I think we're probably going to get more images as the, the weeks come as we get closer to the unknown release date for it. But we do have a full article over on Collider.com. And we also have an article teasing some of the things that came out in yesterday's Variety cover story about Star Trek and where it seems like things are going for that franchise. So you definitely don't want to miss that. Um, which Star Treks have you watched recently? Did you see Discovery? Have you seen any Strange New Worlds? I have not watched Strange New Worlds or Picard. I I watched like half of Discovery. So, and it's it's not like I stop watching things because I don't like it. It's because I get assigned other things. Like yeah. part of the reason why I watched Discovery is because I was assigned to cover it. And then all of a sudden I wasn't. So I moved yeah. on to something else. But I did like what I had seen. Yeah. And also when I was going to the, the conventions, I, I think I went... I, I went maybe two years in a row. Like I had never watched a lot of the older series and I went back and I watched them um, like obviously not all of any yeah. of them, but I watched a lot of, you know, the biggest or most popular episodes from a whole bunch. And like, I knew my, I knew my stuff fairly well at yeah. a point, but then it's like you cram, cram, cram. And then it just evaporates. Mm -hmm. Like, I'll fully admit, I haven't finished Discovery yet. I'm waiting for it to actually have its series finale this year so I can actually go back through and binge it. Because I stopped, like, half a season after the backdoor pilot for Strange New Worlds because yeah. I was assigned Strange New Worlds, so I wanted to make sure I had all of the information I needed up to that point, and then I pivoted to Strange New Worlds. Oh. There's just, I mean, we're really lucky, I think, because there's so much different Star Trek out there right now that regardless of what your, like, flavor of interest is, you can kind of go after these different stories. We even have two fantastic animated series, which ties into our Jurassic uh, Park conversation here, because that Star Trek Prodigy, which is aimed at kids, but has given some, like, the best Star Trek storytelling in a while. 
I've it's only weird. heard good things. I've only heard good things. Um, oh, you know, I'm gonna try to catch up on something eventually. I keep like I keep hearing good things about lots of Star Trek, so I, I it's, it's on my list. The only one I haven't like fully committed to yet is Lower Decks, but I know everybody ah. loves Lower Decks. I just sometimes weird I only about, hear the best things. I know. I'm just sometimes weird about adult humor sometimes. <laughs> and sometimes the humor in that show is a little bit outside of my humor taste. Okay. So, like, I have to be in the right frame of mind for Wait, that one. When you I'm... say when you say adult humor, do you mean do you mean like in general like adult animation humor? No, I it really depends. It sometimes that show veers into like adult swim territory, which was not ah. fully my interest, but like Has Been Hotel is adult animation and I love that and it has a lot of adult humor in it. So, I just, you know, have you I watched love, Big Mouth? I love Big Mouth. <laughs> I think that's I think that's one of the most brilliant examples of high quality adult animation. I love it. That is my guilty pleasure TV show. Every time I get screeners for the new season, I'm like, I'm I'm sitting down and watching the whole thing right now. <laughs> no guilty pleasure when it's high quality stuff. And also, as I always say, no guilty pleasure if you like it at all. Because if you like it, you don't have to feel guilty about it. You just like it, and that's all there is to it. Our last story of the day is an update on Epic Universe at Universal Studios because. They just revealed like a pretty detailed video of one particular part of Epic Universe at mm -hmm. Universal. It's um, I believe the whole thing is scheduled to open in 2025. Yes. But the specific section we're talking about today is how to train your dragon, Isle of Burke, which it looks incredible. It looks incredible. It probably goes without saying. It's an attraction based on the how to train your dragon um films. I think they said it takes place, like it's set between two and three and they keep mm -hmm. calling it 2.5 but per you know usual theme park standards they're gonna have a whole lot of immersive elements in it dining shopping attractions live show and then character meet and greets i wrote down a couple of a couple of the specifics there's like the the hiccups wing gliders family coaster that sounds like you know family That's friendly true. maybe not as intense as i'd like it to be the untrainable dragon show Wet and Wild Boat Battle Fire Drill, Viking Training Camp. Here's the one that really excites me. This one's right up my alley. I think I might have pulled some of this text from the Hollywood Reporter right up, just in case anybody's wondering. Dragon Racers Rally to practice um, aerobatic maneuvers and high-speed barrel rolls on two Viking-made dragon riding trainers that reach heights of up to 67 feet in the air. Universal described the attraction as giving guests the opportunity to control how wild or mild their experience will be as they perform high-flying, gravity-defying, swooping and soaring skills that are necessary to earn the accolades worthy of a true champion dragon racer. Maggie, I will be spinning or like doing the <laughs> doing the wild part of that ride yes. the entire time. Oh my gosh, I love that so much. I miss that you could control that yourself. So I, lo I love that. I like having I control over how many times I can barrel roll. What what is what's the most wild ride you've ever been on? Oh my gosh. Uh I don't I would say Oh my gosh, which is the wildest? Uh Space Mountain almost killed me. So I I would probably say Space Mountain. What? The person, the cast member was talking to me right as we took off when they say, keep your head straight ahead. And they start talking to me and then we took off. And then the whole time I was just like, cool, I'm going to lose my head. It's going to pop oh, off. No. <laughs> so that was the wildest one. I've ever Final done. Destination vibes there. Yeah, um, I mean, that, that was my first fear. I was like, well, <laughs> I do. I do love Space Mountain. I love Space Mountain. I love like roller coasters in the dark. Like I like the Aerosmith one a lot. Oh, um, I just love a roller coaster. Last year I went on the, the new Tron ride at Disney oh, World and I thought it was pretty oh, incredible. I feel like I love, love, love rides and I still and will always love rides. I think no ride out there can be as wild as going bungee jumping though. I don't know if I'm brave enough for that. <laughs> usually usually I'm like the worst kind of influence and I'm like just do it just do it but I would say just do it with skydiving because you're attached to like a professional and yeah. a lot of the choice is taken out of your hands mm -hmm. but when you do a bungee jump you literally walk like yourself to the edge of a platform and must hurl your body like into nothing and I, I do understand the hesitation that comes with that I'd be afraid of whiplash I think that's my biggest fear 
I was very good about following the instructions. Some weren't. Um, the funny thing was, I was actually just talking about this recently. I don't know why this came up, but it came up with Jack Black while I was doing the Kung Fu Panda for content day. And you know how they showed us proper form for mm -hmm. bungee jumping? I, I vividly remember this. I have pictures of it. The instructor had a little Poe figurine, and he he used that to show how you should go over the edge. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so yeah, there's, there's my thoughts on bungee jumping. Is there anything about this, this park that really like amps you up, especially because we have so many of these types of things now, what is it about this particular park that might set it apart from other movie themed ones? So I think I have, I've always been really harsh on universal. I've never like necessarily like loved my time there. I definitely, when you're in Florida and you're split between either get Disney or universal, I'm, I'm always leading towards Disney because I just have a better experience there. But this very much fits into like my interests in terms of movies because there's like a historical element to it. There's this fantastical element. It's kind of like why I like the Hogwarts area at Universal quite a lot because it has that like you feel like you're somewhere fancy. It's not seussical. Um, and I do like the How to Train Your Dragons movies quite a bit. And I think that this is also releasing at a prime period of time because we're going to have a live action version oh yeah out and so i think that's building up my excitement for like what they might be able to do there what kind of character interactions they're going to create what sort of events they're going to have and how they're kind of going to merge those two worlds together kind of like with what star wars has done when things have come out for like mando or ahsoka and those shows they've like brought characters out they've leaned into that i think this gives them some more opportunity to play with things because universal sometimes can get stale feeling because a lot of the stuff is a little bit older it's like the mm -hmm. Some sense it's the seussical stuff which seussical only really works when you've got the grinch at christmas time and i love watching those videos like that's some of my like most delightful videos on tiktok or when i watch people giving him the onion Aww. but i think this has so much opportunity to create special moments in a way that some of the other areas haven't in a while I look forward to that. Before we close out, we will say thank you, Wiley, for the support yeah. in the Super Chat. I really hope they have the iconic sheep from How to Train Your Dragon movies. I feel like they're going to get everything in this park. The, the level of detail that is already apparent in that teaser video is yeah. wildly impressive. You can't wait to see the merchandise they have, too, because you know they're going to have fun stuff. I can wait to see the merchandise because I should not be buying all that merchandise, but I guarantee you I will because I can't help it. Yeah. With that, that is a wrap on today's edition of Collider Dailies. Before we say goodbye, Maggie, promote something. I have an interview coming out next week with Tom Felton. Speaking of Harry Potter there briefly, I uh, talked with him yesterday and they'll be dropping next week and it was a really great conversation. So I look forward to being able to share that with everybody. It was a fun wish list thing that I never thought would happen. He is a lovely interview. I'm very excited you got to talk to him. I will promote my most recent South by interview, which is the Indie TV Showcase interview. Um, Mark Duplass, Mel Eslin, and all the others at Duplass Brothers Productions are kind of like spearheading the movement to ramp mm -hmm. up independently made television series, which is a pretty big deal. I think it's going to be a big deal, at least in terms of how the industry is evolving. I do think we're going to see an indie TV boom, kind of like we saw an indie film boom a while oh back. And, like who better to lead the charge with something like that than Mark Duplass and his team. So check out that conversation to learn a little bit more about it. And with that, we're out of here, but yeah. you will get another Collider Dailies episode tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern. I will not see you then. You will see me though. <laughs> and John, right? And John. Yeah. And we will be All talking right. about the latest episode of X-Men 97. So hey, oh. tonight and get ready for tomorrow. Lots to look forward to tomorrow at 1 Eastern, 10 Pacific. Have a good one, everyone.